Hey guys, this is Coach Putter. In this episode of the Wellness and High Performance Podcast, I want to talk to you about how a regular sauna use can help you live a longer and a healthier life. And before we get to that, I would like to remind you that if you have been benefiting from this podcast and if you have been enjoying this episode and you like to help the podcast to grow, would you please do me a favor, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, rate and review on whatever platform that you're consuming this information and this content from. Thank you so much for doing that. I think it's absolutely fascinating that nowadays aging is being studied as a disease meaning that aging is being studied as something that, you know, we, we at this point in time, we can't completely remove aging from the equation, but we can definitely extend our lifespans. And I think that's pretty cool. But the real kind of the kicker is not just thinking about what can extend your lifespan, but rather ask what can extend your health span because your lifespan and your health span are not the same thing and increasing your lifespan but keeping your health span the same you know that's not much fun and that's basically what's happening right now is that the our lifespan is the longest that what it's ever been i think the last time i checked um, for for instance here in australia it was uh, something along the lines of 80 82 and a half years i think was the average women a little bit more and then men a little bit less so that's really good but then the average health span which is how many years do you spend or do you get to live without delirium frailty and disease the average health span is somewhere around 70 years. So on average, based on that, you can expect to spend the last 12 years of your life with you know, delirium, frailty, disease, or any combination of these, um, or all of them. And therefore, like it's yes, it's nice that we have these really good technological innovations and Western medicine is doing an absolutely fantastic job at keeping us alive and increasing our lifespan but increasing your health span is that something that really comes down to you and that's really your responsibility to make sure that your lifestyle is such that you're incorporating things into your life that are extending your health span what are some things that can increase your health span well as a listener of the podcast you already know that physical activity, having a certain amount of muscle mass, having a certain level of aerobic fitness is absolutely critical for your health and for your resiliency. You know, prioritizing sleep, prioritizing stress management, making sure that you're breathing correctly, making sure that you're eating mostly a whole food diet. doesn't have to be 100% a whole food diet, but 80-85% whole foods 15 20 percent can be processed foods that's not a problem these are some really big hitters when it comes to making sure that you're ticking the box of increasing your chances of living a longer and more importantly living a healthier life and the final thing i would like to add that is just making sure that you're in a good body composition not having excess amounts of body fat as that is an absolute drag on your health and on your longevity. So it turns out that there's other types of things too that have been shown to increase our health span and even our lifespan. And oftentimes it comes to stressing. You know, we need certain types of stresses to keep our bodies going and to keep our DNA nice and healthy. So it there's a very interesting book, Why We Age and Why We Don't Have To, by Dr. David Sinclair, who is a scientist in the Harvard University. And Dr. Sinclair explains in the book that we've inherited these genes from some of the very earliest bacteria that ever lived on planet Earth. And they had these genes that were activated 
by certain types of stresses. So we've inherited these genes that when activated, they actually repair our DNA and effectively make you younger. And how can we activate these genes, which are called sirtuins, S-I-R-T-U-I-Ns, if you want to look them up. Well, certain types of stresses, such as going through a period of calorie restriction, exercise, and temperature, these types of stresses are shown to activate these genes that literally repair your DNA. And when your DNA is more robust and your biological age is younger, well, now you're more resilient to literally anything as because of you know the fact that aging and having DNA that's damaged that is going to be a significant factor that's going to put you at risk for pretty much anything that can take a human being down. So the final thing I mentioned on the list there I mentioned temperature and temperature how can we stress ourselves with temperature well of course we can take cold showers we can take ice baths those things have been shown to be very beneficial for the body but then we also have heat and as a Finn as someone who has absolutely grown up to love saunas and to go to the sauna multiple times a week I'm of course very very thrilled to hear and learn about this that oh sauna use is actually coming up as something that's actually really, really good for our bodies. So essentially, sauna use stimulates a lot of the same benefits that we get from exercising. And it's been proposed as a tool for people who cannot exercise for one reason or another. It's been kind of recommended well at least go in the sauna and at least get into a hot sauna make sure that it's about 80 degrees warm make sure you stay there at least 20 minutes because that is going to stress your cardiovascular system in a very similar way that low intensity exercise would now the other thing is that extreme heat stress such as high temperature sauna is also going to stimulate the increase in something known as heat shock protein expression. Heat shock proteins are these proteins that are absolutely abundant in the body, they're, they're pretty much everywhere. And once activated, they've been shown to have benefits for neurological diseases like Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, Huntington's disease, and for cardiovascular diseases, atherosclerosis, heart attacks, and other types of problems with the heart and with the cardiorespiratory system. What's interesting about these heat shock proteins is that they kind of activate half an hour after you've been exposed to high heat, so after you've been you've you've gone into the sauna and it's kind of like the their expression is going to peak and then it's going to stay it's going to decline steadily from there on. And it's, it turns out that when you heat acclimate yourself, meaning that when you adapt yourself to being able to be in a hotter sauna and for a longer period of time, and I'll talk to you about that in just a little moment, a little bit more, it turns out that your body will produce more heat shock proteins and then you, your peak will be higher and then they will hang around for longer, 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 longer. So a heat acclimation and becoming conditioned for you going to the sauna is going to give you more benefits from going to the sauna. The most exciting study about the health benefits of sauna has been ongoing in Finland since 1984, so almost 40 years at this point in time. It's been authored or conducted by Dr. Jari Laukkanen and his team of research, and it's called the Guapio Ischemic Heart Disease Study. And in this study, when they recruited these men, those 2,300 men were recruited in 1984, these men were between 42 and 60 years old, and they lived in eastern Finland. These men were divided into three groups, the people who report that they use the sauna once a week, 
the ones who use the sauna two to three times a week and then the ones who use the sauna four to seven times a week and they've been following them for almost 40 years now to see what kind of outcomes and experiences these people have had with their neurological and cardiovascular health and what's absolutely fascinating at the 20 year follow-up so this would have been in 2004 at the 20 year follow-up when comparing the group of people who went to the sauna only once a week compared to the group who went to the sauna two to three times a week the group who went two to three times a week had 27 percent less any kind of cardiovascular related events deaths or problems than the people who went to the sauna only once a week and what was absolutely mind-blowing because that's a pretty significant difference what was mind-blowing is that this was a dose dependent relationship because the people who went to the sauna four to seven times a week had literally double the benefits so they were 50 percent less likely to have any kind of a cardiovascular event than the people who only went to the sauna once a week and no that's not people who aren't going to the sauna at all you know that's just people who go into the sauna only once a week the same study also found that the group of men who went to the sauna four to seven times a week were 66 less likely 66 percent less likely to develop dementia or alzheimer's disease and 77 percent less likely to develop any kind of psychotic disorders again compared to the people who only go into the sauna once a week but not to the people who are never going you know who knows there there was no such a group in this study so that's absolutely fascinating and that's kind of the hallmark study that's still ongoing that's really the most exciting thing that's showing that hey like this sauna and going to the sauna often and regularly can really be something that can really increase your health span and as it can really also increase your lifespan and extend your life so that's super cool now I always love to point out that in my opinion it does matter how you use the sauna because if we look at this particular study and again it's being conducted in Finland and as a Finn like I can guarantee you that there's a very specific specific way in which these men are using their sauna. First of all, they're not using an infrared sauna, they're not using a steam room, no, no, no. They're using a traditional Finnish sauna, which is either heated up by electricity or by wood. So it's going to be a quote-unquote dry sauna which is what it's oftentimes called, but I think that I don't really like the term dry sauna. I would rather just call it the traditional Finnish sauna. So you're going to have an element in the sauna and the element is going to be heating rocks. And this element can either be heated by electricity or it might have a fireplace underneath it. Regardless of which method is used, usually the sauna is heated to 80 degrees celsius and that is when you you go in and that's when you begin using the sauna well how do you use the sauna well we do something called lolu so we quote unquote we throw lolu so you're going to throw water on the rocks then you're going to throw again you're going to throw again and it's going to get very hot in the room momentarily because of the steam and then that's going to peak after a certain time and then the lolu is going to gradually wane away so why don't i just show you why don't i actually bring to the sauna with me and i'll show you exactly what i'm talking about so this is me in the our apartment complex sauna enjoying some really good lolu let's take a look <laughs>
there you go that's some pretty good loader right there and i'm really lucky like we have an absolutely awesome sauna here in our apartment complex even though i live here in melbourne and i'm able to use the sauna i literally go there every day you know people who live in my apartment complex they all know when the finnish guy shows up and he reaches for the bucket and he starts putting water in they'll usually you know they've they're used to it by now <laughs> i feel like oftentimes they know exactly when i usually go there so a lot of people try to avoid being in the sauna at the same time as i am i'm kind of getting the vibe after all these years of going there and i know that a lot of people who aren't used to going to the sauna they're gonna look at them and be like oh my god that looks terrible there's no way like i don't want to do that like that's not enjoyable like yeah you probably don't need to go to that level initially <laughs> um but i can guarantee you that again like if we look at this study that's being ongoing in finland and basically any other study that's ever been conducted on sauna use in finland this is pretty much exactly how those people are using the sauna they're making it very hot momentarily with lolu then you let the lolu subside you usually do that and then you do it again you throw lolu again so you would do about that two to three times and then you would take a break you go and have a cold shower you might jump in roll in the snow you might have a swim in the lake depending what time of the year it is although you can do it in the winter time too if you just drill a hole into the ice which is awesome but regardless you'll take a break and then you go back into the sauna and usually you would kind of repeat this cycle two to three times for you know a total of maybe half an hour to 45 minutes and yeah you probably end up spending like 20 minutes half an hour in the sauna all together you do have to spend at least 20 minutes in the sauna to kind of get these all these benefits and again my recommendation is to do it like a fin you know don't leave it to chance do it like a fin and don't worry you will develop a tolerance to load and a, a little little tip might be you might have seen a sauna hat like this thing that covers your ears because oftentimes that's the thing that's stopping people from staying in the load is that their ears are burning because their ears haven't adapted to being able to tolerate the heat so if you get one of those sauna hats you know the goal of it is obviously to make you look fancy and make you look good but it actually has a functional purpose too which is to protect your ears so yeah i'm super <laughs> thrilled to hear about this research because as i said like i've been going to the sauna since i was very little at least multiple times a week and nowadays in particular i go seven days a week without without fail and the only time when i wasn't going seven times a week was during covid and that was a very very difficult time for me like that was the hardest thing about covid here in melbourne for literally for nine months I wasn't able to go to the sauna and it was very difficult for me mentally because it's a, such an important part of my life and that's kind of a good segue to the other benefit of going to the sauna which is actually why I go there which is more of like a psychological thing you know it's cool that it has all these health benefits but the thing that I'm going there for is that it's well it's part of my routine it's part of my nighttime routine when I really start winding down but it's this place where you go and you just reflect and you just let things come up from your subconscious mind you might do some calm nasal breathing controlled breathing you might meditate there but the sauna is not a place to go and read it's not a place to go and talk loudly or listen to music or try to distract yourself like i see that a lot of people come to the sauna and they've heard that oh i gotta spend 20 minutes in the sauna so I'm going to try to distract myself in any way possible so that the 20 minutes will go. Sure, if that's your thing, but you know, the proper Finnish way is to use the sauna as a place. It's kind of like every man's own little church that they have in their home in Finland. It's literally the number one stress management tool that any Finn can have because it doesn't matter what kind of a day you've had you might have a million things go wrong in your life but when you get in the sauna and you crank that shit up you make it really hot 
and you enjoy some proper lolu and you have a good cold shower afterwards holy crap like there is not a worry in the world anymore final recommendation about sony is, is that if you have access to one in your apartment complex well you know use it whenever you like really but in particular at night time it can be a great thing to incorporate in your nighttime routine because it can have a very good impact on your sleep quality so it's really important that your body temperature drops slightly at night time so that you can get to the deepest possible sleep it's in particular in the earlier part of the night so when you use the sauna and your body is exposed to extreme heat now your body starts cooling itself down very actively so your core temperature actually starts dropping because blood is pushed to the periphery that's where you're sweating that's where you're getting a little bit red and then when you cool down after the sauna well now your core temperature has actually dropped just slightly so that's why doing the sauna at night time can be a really really good thing for your sleep quality and of course also it's going to have this relaxing and calming effect on your nervous system in particular if you're also doing some kind of meditation or deep breathing techniques and slow breathing techniques oh man i always get fired up when talking about saunas and i'm so excited to be able to go to finland for the first time in three years in two weeks time i'm going to be in finland Oh, in three weeks, I'm going to be on my friend's cabin. And we have a, a tradition of going to this cabin. It's uh, in the north and it's by a lake. And there is a sauna building next to the lake. There's no electricity, no water, just a sauna and then a, a little cabin. And it's absolutely fantastic. And we, we, we crank the sauna up actually in the morning and in the evening. And it's one of those old ones that you fire up with wood. And it gives literally the best lolu in the whole world and you go to the sauna we're going to the lake back and forth it's absolutely amazing i'm so excited i'm looking forward to that so much so if you know anyone who would enjoy hearing this information about saunas who you already talking about saunas and then maybe they use a the sauna but maybe they don't use it like a fin maybe they need to know how to throw some load would you please do them and me a favor and share this episode with them if you have any questions make sure to send them to hello at coachputer.com and make sure to connect with me on Instagram at coachputer. Looking forward to meeting you. Thank you so much for watching and listening to this episode. I'll see you in the next one. This is Coach Puter. Let's do this.